Välkomna tillbaka. Då blev det dags för nästa bolag och nu kommer jag gå över till engelska. And the next company presenting is Initiator Pharma with the CEO Klaus Olsen. Stage is yours, Klaus. Thank you very much. As I said, my name is uh, Klaus Olsen and I'm the CEO of, of Initiator Pharma. So next slide, please. So, so uh, Initiator Pharma, I guess we're on the next slide, I couldn't see it here, but uh, Initiator Pharma is a company focused on safe therapeutic modulation of monoamine neurotransmitters. And by applying this technology, we can actually go in and we can target a range of central nervous system uh, diseases and disorders with significant on med medical needs. We have two uh, drug candidates in clinical development. We have IP2015 and IP2018 which are both candidates to treat erectile dysfunction. I'll get back to a little bit later the difference between the various forms we're targeting here. Most recently, we added a, a new program to our clinical pipeline in severe neuropathic pain, more specifically in trigeminal neuralgia. And here we are using the same drug systems as we're using in the IPID 2015 program. Next slide, please. So what is it we are working with in initiator farming? We are working with modulation of the monomines. Monomines are signal molecules that are used by the mononeric uh, neurons in the brain. So they are involved in a lot of processes, so, such as sexual function, mood, pain, some of memory. So they're actually involved in many, many different aspects. And again, here by targeting these, we can actually go in and we can actually target a range of indications as said. This is a truly validated technology. Not only are we using monoamine uh, neurotransmitter mod modulation, this has been done for many years and there's been many compounds approved for different indications. One of the big challenges with the previous marketed drugs is that you know, sometimes the efficacious window, so that's where you have an effect and the negative side effects are too close. So you often ended up having taken drugs that help one in condition, but actually gave you a lot of other things. One example is that people taking antidepressants often also have sexual dysfunction problems. And here, this is one of the negative consequences. So what we do in Initiative Pharma, we have a new generation of proprietary compounds with a unique profile targeting the modulations of monomines, but also a very safe profile that actually will allow us to treat the various indications without having the negative side effects. Next slide, please. So what is it we focus on in Initiator? We have a clinical pipeline where we have full priority on three programs at this stage. As I just said, we are focused on erectile dysfunction. We have a program that we completed a phase 2A proof of concept in for organic erectile dysfunction. And now we have submitted the application to go into a phase 2B in partnership with MEC Clinical Research in the UK. We also have the IP 2018 program, which is for psychogenic erectile dysfunction. And again, this is an ongoing phase 2A study that is fully financed, and we're looking to have the readout later this year. And as just as I said, we also have a pain program based on the 2015 drug candidate that we also can use in neuropathic pain, in more specifically the indication called trigeminal neuralgia. And since it's already been in phase one, we can actually start up with a proof of principle in pain and move fast forward with this program. And again, it's really important here to say that we are going in and we're actually targeting validated pathways. So we know monomines work for pain. We know monomines, especially dopamine, has a very positive effect for erection response. However, we can do it safely. And this is the unique thing about Initiator Pharma. Next slide, please. So we are targeting very attractive market opportunities. Yet alone in erectile dysfunction, more than 300 million men is expected to suffer from erectile dysfunction in the coming years. 30 to 40% of these do not respond to standard of care. So we actually are positioning two of our drug candidates to target these non-responders. We split them up into two groups, organic erectile dysfunction and psychogenic erectile dysfunction. I'll get back to that later in the presentation. But in combined, we are looking at starting of having you know, values for each indication going from 1 million 1 billion US uh, euro, uh, all the way up to 2.3 billion euro in, in, uh, in peak sales. So this is a very, very attractive market and also a very significant market. In trigeminal neuralgia, we are looking at an orphan drug indication, so a lot less patients. But at this, you know, getting an orphan drug destination is actually really important. First of all, we can get premium pricing, we get additional patent protection and clinical data protection of the data coming out from this. So we actually see this as a very good 
and very diversified stronghold for initiated farmer. With this, we're looking at a peak sales between 0.5 billion up to 1.4 billion euros in annual sales. So again, we have multiple shots on goal in very valuable and also diversified indications. And this is very unique. Next slide, please. Initiative Pharma has a very unique offering. So we're actually maximizing the value of our proprietary drugs that are already de-risked because they have been in the clinic. We have a highly experienced team driving this process forward. So we have people who's been doing this many times and who knows about these pathways that we are working with. The studies that we are conducting are relative short studies. You know, also we can see for a relative modest investment, we can get to multiple value inflection points. And also the clinical readouts, you know, the efficacy points in the clinical trial is truly validated. That's one of the benefit working with indications where there is a good understanding of this from the regulatory authorities, but also again, working with pathways that we know how works. So we see a very risk uh, uh, reward attractive profile here because we are targeting the validated pathways where we know the compounds will have an effect. And also we see the potential to reduce the overall development time, especially with the addition of the neopathic pain program, where we'd actually accelerate this program and taking it forward to the patient even faster. So again, we are developing safe and efficacious drugs. Next slide, please. So multiple value inflection points of this year and the coming year is there's going to be many and we are really excited about all the things that we have in our pipeline. We have already, as I said, submitted the phase 2B protocol for the organic erectile dysfunction together with MAC. And we expect to have the approval and the start of this uh, study in Q3 of this year, pending the COVID-19, of course. We will get back to the market when we know, have the, the study approved and tell exactly what we are going to do in this study. Also, we are looking forward to the completion of the IP2018 IP trial in psychogenic erectile dysfunction. And as we said before, the COVID-19 has given you know, some uh, slow recruitment, but we are looking forward to generate data and have the clinical readout in this trial as well. Also, we want to initiate a, what we call a proof of principle trial in trigeminal neuralgia. Eximob, we will do a proof of principle in a pain study, making sure we have the right starting point when we go into a trigeminal neuralgia patients. I'll get back to that as well. Next year, we're looking forward to complete the phase 2B uh, trial in the organic erectile dysfunction. We'll also complete a, a, um, a MAD study uh, with the IPTN 2021. Also, this is again the drug substance from 2015. So we actually can do multiple dosings in the later pain uh, trial. And also, we are looking forward to develop a regulatory strategy of how we can accelerate these programs fastest forward to the market and continue the clinical development of the IP 2018 program, pinning the data that's coming out. And we have a lot of good ideas here, and we are just looking into the data when we get it, and then we'll decide the next moves here. Next slide, please. So Initiative Pharma is a Danish headquartered company. We're headquartered in Copenhagen. We were listed in 2017 on the Spotlight Stock Market. Uh, we have uh, more than uh, 4,000 shareholders. And you can see here on the right-hand side, you see we have uh, recently added some uh, well household known names to the, to the shareholder space, uh, Link uh, and Adrigo from, from Sweden. And you also see the management still have a uh, good portion of the shares in the company and is highly motivated to go forward and deliver good results here. So next slide, please. As I said, there's a highly experienced team behind it. I don't want to go into all the details today with the people behind the team. But as you see, we have seasoned people in the board who has known how to go from early stage clinical into later stage and all the way to product launch. And the same is very much true in the leadership in the management of the company. Here again, we have people who's been working in this space in these indications for years and who's also gone all the way from early R&D all the way up to product launch. And this is again, a very, very strong team for taking the company forward. Next slide, please. So recently we just completed the direct issue. We went out to the, to the shareholders for an EGM and actually what it does is divided in two parts. First part was a direct issue of the 30 million Swedes, actually bringing in the investors that I mentioned before, I'll get back to that. And also there's a preferential uh, uh, rights issue following up on this. 
And we are working on the prospectus to, to the authorities to finance inspection in, in Denmark. And when we have a more you know, uh, overview of the timeline, we will come back to the market and tell you when is the exercise period going to be for this. We expect this to happen during the summer of uh, 21. But as I said, we will keep the market posted as soon as we know what the feedback from the authorities is. They Right now, they have a, a, a lot of work to do. So they um, actually have delayed all the, the feedbacks to all the companies applying for this. So next slide, please. So as I said, we uh, bring in a, st a strong syndicate of investors with um, Link and Agrigo. They are long-term investors. They're committed in for the long run. And actually, you know, it comes in and gives, you know, Initiative Farm a, a true validation of what we have been working with. They are experienced in looking at companies and what assets they have. And we are highly appreciative of that. And also for the first time, it actually puts Initiative Farm in a position where we are funded all the way in to a good time in the future, actually well into 23. And actually that gives us good you know, grounds for continuing the clinical development, but also very much the development, business development strategy that we are applying, making sure we get out and speak to all the farmers that potentially could have an interest in our compounds, and also making sure that we actually find the partner for the, for example, for the ED program that is right for us. So super good and a really good position for us to be in financial. Next slide, please. So expanding our pipeline into uh, the clinical development of uh, a neopathic pain program is, is one of the things that we want to do with the majority of the resources we got in from the, the recent investment. Next slide, please. We know monomines play a really important role in, in regulation of pain. It's something that's been done for many years. And one of the examples, you know, for example, is um, deloxetine that was developed by Eli Lilly that being also was used for neopathic pain. Actually had good response in some forms of neopathic pain. Actually have a lot of these negative side effects that you don't want to have in a compound that you want to take every day as a chronic treatment. So here we actually saw increased sexual problems. There was liver tox and also there was a black box warning from the FDA on the risk of suicide, uh, suicidal thoughts. So again, what we are envisioning with the IPTN21 program is actually we have a drug candidate that is very differentiated and will change the safety and efficacy paradox. So we don't see any of these negative effects. And this is due to the profile of the monomine levels we get with this drug. And this is really a proprietary thing of what initiators Pharma is sitting on. So again, we are coming in with drugs that modulates in a safe and a very desirable way. Next slide, please. So trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal neuralgia is an often drug indication. It actually, it's a, it's a neopathic pain that comes in. It, it strikes you as a sudden onset of pain down through the trigeminal nerve over your face. And it comes, you know, can be very deliberating uh, pain. It can be an onset coming from being touched, brushing your teeth, putting on makeup, or it can be what we call idiopathic. We don't know what the cause is. And actually it gives this very, very severe uh, pain in the patient. In some patients it's also referred to as suicidal pain because it's registered as being one of the most painful events you can come into. We see some of these patients actually get from a few attacks today up to, to hundreds of attacks per day. And some patients actually have a continuation of pain sensitization throughout the day. You can roughly split the, the patient segment into two groups. You can say the ones where you can identify with an MRI, you know, what is actually touching the nerve? Is there something that is pushing the nerve to get this activation? And those you often go in and you do an invasive surgery where you go in and you're trying to get the nerve free. So when you get the nerve free, you can go in and you can decompress the area around the nerve. And hereby you could actually, for the patient, you can actually give relief. There's a lot of uh, negative consequences of this. Often you get numb in the face and that numbness stay there for a long time, even after the pain often returns. Because if the procedure is not you know, uh, life-changing, it's only for a period of time and often reverts back to the normal pain picture as before. In the, in the idiopathic patients where we don't can do a surgery because we don't know where the compression is, so to say, we actually go in and there's a pharmacological treatment. The only FDA approved pharmacological treatment is carbamazepine which is an, an old anticonvulsant used and is a very dirty drug, so to speak. There's a lot of uh, side effects with these drugs, both on, again, on cardiovascular system and also on you know, mood and sexual function. And there's many, many, many things that you don't want to have here with this compound. So it's a very bad and very dirty compound. And we also see the efficacy of this compound is not very high. And there's a tendency for the patient, the way it works, it actually wears off over time. And we can see that by majority of the patients 
are actually taking other medications on top of carbamazepine, trying to reduce the burden of the pain. So we think that kind of this trigeminal neuralgia, this orphan drug indication, is an area we want to go in with our drugs because actually our picture, our profile of the pain profile we have shoots very well into this indication. Next slide, please. So how are we going to do this? So this is actually differentiating quite a bit from what we are thinking to do with the ED. In ED, we need to go all the way to a phase three where you will need to partner up with a larger farmer before getting into a large trial, taking to the market. In erectile dysfunction, oh, sorry, in, in, in neuropathic pain, in, in trigeminal neuralgia, it's very different. Here, we're actually looking at starting out with a proof of principle trial in healthy subjects. So we go in and we inflict pain on these. And we are doing this in, in four in different groups, so to speak. So we give them two doses of our own compound. We give them placebo and we give them uh, pregabaline, which is an approved uh, neopatric pain drug. When we do this to learn more about how the compound works in pain and what is the picture that we see, how fast does it work? And also we know when going to a patient, we also know something about the duration to so what we call the PKPD relationship. This is really important because we, we need to have all these information when we go into the real patient study and try trigeminal neuralgia. So one of the things we want to do after completing this study, which doesn't take long because it's healthy uh, subjects, actually we want to continue the development of our drug candidate and actually go into what we call a MAD study, a multiple ascending dose. So far, the compounds we have developed have only been used for on-demand, so we only need to give one dose. But here, when we go on to go into the pain segment of trigeminal neuralgia and having a trial there, we need to be able to dose multiple times. And for this, we need the MAD study. And this is also financed by the recent fundraise. And then from here on, you can say the picture becomes a little bit more muddy because we have a few options on our hands. One of them is to go in and do a small uh, trigeminal neuralgia patients in 20 patients, do a crossover in this group, and actually making sure we get good read readouts here. And all we can actually go all the way uh, to the authorities and ask if we could do a phase two or three previous registration trial. This is depending on the data coming out of the first uh, uh, pain trial and the discussions with the regulatory authorities. So actually a very short uh, lead time to go into an orphan drug indication. Next slide, please. So here in the last couple of minutes of the presentation, I would like to present the other programs that we are still fully focused on in Initiate Pharma. And this is erectile dysfunction. Now we know there's a large number of men not responding to the current treatment and we see this number even increasing. Next slide. And we also see what is the reasons for this? Well, we can see that in you know, some patient groups, we see that none, none of the, some of them respond even less. Like uh, for example, diabetic people, we see then less than 50% of the patients respond to the standard of care. So the only alternative they have actually is you know, taking a, a syringe and inject them directly itself into the penile tissue, which is not very attractive. So there is a need for better treatments of these non-responders. And this is what we have with 2015 and 2018. Sorry. Next slide, please. Just to understand what is the mechanism behind erection response, what, how, what drives a function. We know, you know you're being stimulated, seeing something nice, being touched, remembering something nice. All this is processed into the brain to the release of dopamine and monamine neurotransmitter. And that actually drives through a process to increase uh, blood flow to the penis. And then you have the erection. So this is where dopamine comes in. So when you actually targeting the dopamine component, the dopaminergic pathway, you actually strengthen the natural erection response. This has been validated with other drugs before in the clinical setting, but some of these drugs that have been used could not be used for, for patients because they had too many negative side effects. So we actually go in with a drug that is safe, targeting a validated pathway that we know works. Next slide, please. So roughly, as I said, we are splitting up the erectile dysfunction in two groups. We have the, what we call the organic erectile dysfunction and the psychogenic erectile dysfunction. In rough terms, you can say the, the organic erectile dysfunction is what happens to us when we grow older, the system just gets less responsive, the cardiovascular complications, so we are not as good as dilating getting increased blood flow to the penis. So this is happening from the age of 40 and just continue and gets worse and worse as the older we get. Whereas the psychogenic erectile dysfunction is caused by depression, anxiety, and many other things that actually you can say putting a lid on the response in your brain. So even though the system is fully capable of dilating and getting sufficient blood in, there's an underlying uh, depression or anxiety that needs to be treated. 
And this is what we do with our two candidates, with our candidates. Next slide, please. 2015, you just take next slide and go straight in. We actually were positioning for organic erectile dysfunction. We did a study here at the, at the Mac Clinic where we actually looked at patients that are, do not respond to the standard of care. And we actually give them the compound or placebo and then we stimulate them by a video, a erotic video, and we measure the erection of the penis. This way we could actually see how they respond to the treatment. And we saw in this trial that 25% of the patients that we brought in actually response positively to this. This is a really, really good result. Also th taking into consideration, this is a very artificial setting that can actually give a lot of anxiety for a lot of the patients involved. So here again, when we do this study, we're actually really happy with the 25 response rate and we see that our compound works. Actually, next slide. The results were also quite intriguing because when we started to discuss with pharma, we also had Mac, who actually conducted the study, medical clinical research, actually getting interested in the compound and actually saying, could we become part of this and take a uh, continue in the development of uh, IP2015 for organic erectile dysfunction? And we found a structure where they actually conduct the clinical trial. They take all the clinical trial costs internally for them and they convert it into shares in Initiator Pharma. Not only did we get a, a premium, we actually got a significant premium of 70% to the current share price at the time of the deal. So they will become shareholders in Initiated Pharma on the equal terms with all other shareholders. I have This way we do not give away any rights, any future royalties on the compounds. And this is really attractive for us. Next slide, please. As I said, we have just fa filed the phase 2B. We're looking forward to get the feedback from that. We envision having a study of 120 patients. Again, it is a phase two study, so it will be safety and tolerability as primary endpoints. But we also look at the IIF5 scores, which is you know the clinical validated efficacy endpoints that we will use in a later registration trial. We are on the trajectory to deliver and uh, complete the, uh, the trial at the end of 22, so at the end of next year. Next slide, please. IPED 2018 and psychogenic ED is the uh, what the, the trial that is ongoing at the moment. So we just take next slide. And here I'm just, just focus on one of the causes of it. We know it's depression is a significant cause of uh, psychogenic ED. We know that uh, more than uh, roughly 20 million uh, patients in the in the US have an, an onset of their major depression uh, attack every year. And we actually know that up to 68% of people, you know, that have depressions also come a bit with sexual dysfunctions. So these are the patients that we're looking to target. Next slide, please. And the way we are doing this is actually by using the 2018 compound, which has a little bit different profile from the 2015. They still have the dopamine component that is really important for the sexual response, so the erection response, but it also has a serotonin component, which is a validated way of treating depression. So by having the right balance between the treatment for the depression and the treatment for the uh, erectile dysfunction, we actually have a drug that will work in these uniquely. Here again, we are doing a study similar to what we did in the 2015 program, where we actually bring them in. Here we have three, uh, three, uh, three way crossovers, so they get placebo and two doses of our compound to learn more about the PKPD relationship. And again, here we show them a erotic movie and we get uh, a readout of the RITI scan. And we expect to complete this trial later this year. So we are actually really excited about this and we're looking forward uh, to the continued development of the 2018 pending the data that is coming out of this trial. Next slide, please. With this, I'm coming to the end of my presentation and just highlighting again, this is the time to come in and join Initiator Pharma. We have multiple value and inflection points coming up this year and in, in, in the coming year. And we are looking forward to bring you know, benefits to patients and their partners. And with this, I would like to say thank you and take any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Klaus, for that presentation. And we'll have time for one quick question. Uh, can you give us a brief update of the COVID-19 situation in the UK? And do you see an optimism that clinical delays can be avoided? So you can say uh, in, definitely in the UK, we, we, uh, we saw that they got really advanced with the, uh, with the vaccinations. But the, the society is still what some slow. So we see that they, not only in us, across the board of clinical trials, it seems like their recruitments are somewhat slower. And what we are trying to do is, well, of course, we are continuously monitoring what is the, uh, that is actually hindering us from getting uh, you know, all the patients into the study and how do we make sure we stick to the timelines that we have set out. And so this is something that you're monitoring daily. And uh, you know, there's uh, ways to do this. You can say you can also see what is the things that they are failing for in the conclusion criteria. And that is something we are con continuing monitoring and, and will modify it if it's, if it's needed. Thank you very much, Klaus, for that answer. And we're actually 
running out of time here for this uh, Q&A session, but we'll make sure to send the questions to you so you have the opportunity to ask them via email. Thank you very much for participating and good luck in the future. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Och vi är strax tillbaka med nästa bolag. Ses snart.